In today's video, I have two examples for you to show you how destructuring in Rust looks like. Now, if you're from a JavaScript background, you already know what destructuring is. You can use the three dot notations to destructure arrays and get some values and assign those values. And you have a similar concept in Rust and we'll be looking at that today. So I have created a new project uh, with Cargo. This is a new Cargo project. And in my main.rs file, I've removed everything that I got with the file. <coughs> So here you'll create a function, the main function, just like you have func main and golang, you have fn main here. And just like you have uh, arrays in JavaScript and you have arrays and slices in golang, and you have arrays, uh, lists, tuples, dictionaries, all of that in Python, you have something called as tuples here. We are not going to take a look, deeper look into tuples because that's uh, going to be taken, uh, that's going to be done by me in one of the future videos as in we'll take a deeper look into tuples. Uh, right now I'm just showing you what tuple basically is. We'll take a very simple example of a tuple. So tuple is basically a collection of numbers, let's say. So you have these two uh, round brackets here and you have x comma y. <coughs> uh, let, let's say these two other things in a tuple or they could be multiple values like three, four, five, six, seven. And um, if you're from a Golang background, you know how to assign multiple values to multiple different variables in the same line. And that's what we were attempting to do here. So what if we wanted to assign all of these values to different variables like x, y, z, uh, and so on. So we could say l let x comma y comma z comma, sorry, x comma y comma z comma w uh, comma k, let's say there are five of these, is equal to three, four, five, six, seven, right? There are five of these, five of these on this side. And now when we try to run this program and say the value of the value of x is comma x. Um, and we obviously we'll run this program, we'll get a warning for all the other unused uh, variables, but that's okay. We want to see if this uh, assignment took place or not. So let's let's go and take a look. So here, when I come here and I say cargo run, what you get here is an error because of not adding a semicolon, but not because you've not used uh, X, Y, Z. So one, even when you solve this error, you will get those warnings like I had just mentioned. So we'll go here and we'll add our um, semicolon and we'll run the program again. So back in our terminal, if we say cargo run, and now it should run, but it should, it'll also, uh, the value of x is three, it should run, but it will also give us warnings. Like I said, you'll get y, x, y, z, w, k, all of those warnings. And, but the most important thing here is that x, um, is getting the value three. So there, this is a way to assign multiple variables with multiple values in just one line uh, in Rust. And so whenever you see these two round brackets, that's basically a tuple. Like I said, we'll be digging down into the uh, characteristics of arrays and tuples later on uh, in one of the future videos. But I just want to show you what it looks like, you know. And uh, here, what you can now do is to remove all the warnings. I'll just copy and paste this quickly so that we can be able to uh, print out the values of y and z and w and k as well. And here also I'll say y, um, z, w and k. Save it, I'll run it. And now hopefully we should not get any uh, warnings or errors. As you can see here, all of the values, the way you wanted them, they have been assigned. All right. Now you're probably wondering that I had mentioned about the three dots for destructuring and I've not used them till now. So let me show you how you can use that. So you remove all of this. And here you can use three dots to mention all of the other numbers. In the sense, let's say you just want to assign the value of X to become equal to three but you do not care about all the other values that are there in the tuple. So where would you want to use this? So let's say you're receiving some data from an API and you know that only the first 
character, the first um, you know value you want to be able to assign to x, but you don't really care about all the other values because you don't know how many values are there in that entire tuple. So in this case, you will use something like this, uh, you know, the real restructuring, the one with the three dots. And here also, when we run this program and we say the value of x is, um, you know, those curly braces and x, it should work. But before we head over to our terminal to run this program, I want to tell you that in Rust, we don't have three dots, we just have two dots, right? So I showed you three dots because this is a place where a lot of JavaScript developers, they face a lot of challenges because they're used to writing those three dots and then they kind of screw up a lot. So I just want to mention those three dots and then I want to show you that you have you don't have those three dots, you have two dots. And this is the same thing like JavaScript. So when you run this program now, you go to your terminal and you say cargo run, it will work perfectly fine. And you will get the value, the value of x is three. But let's say just for messing around, I put three dots by mistake. It won't let me run this program. It'll give me an error. Okay, so it doesn't recognize it. Rust doesn't even recognize those three dots. So it's not like you could just add as many dots as you wanted to. All right, now the same thing can be done for uh, if you have a lot of values in front, right? And the last value is the one that you want to assign to y. So let's say we have another array or a tuple, sorry, which has eight, nine, three, four, seven, whatever, all these values. And you don't care about any of the values. You just care about the last value getting assigned to y. And let's do that. Now let's try doing that. And let me remove this dot here, remove the error. And so that I don't want the warning and I want to print out the value of y, what I'll do is I'll copy and paste this line here. I'll say the value of y is Y. Now when we run this, we get the value of x is 3 and value of y is 7. Okay, so I hope um, it's quite clear how restructuring in Rust works. All right, you can ignore all the values after the first value or you can ignore all the values uh, before uh, the value that you want to assign which is y. Now this was destructuring a tuple, tuple with round brackets, but you can do the same for arrays as well. And arrays have these square brackets. Now again, uh, just like we haven't talked about tuples, we haven't talked about arrays till now, but and we'll be talking about them in a lot of depth. This is just like, I'm just showing it to you from a, a 10,000 feet perspective, just to show you what destructuring is before we talk about arrays and tuples, okay? So if you take an array like this and you say, um, dot dot comma z z or z however you want to pronounce it and here you'll say four comma seven comma eight comma nine comma zero comma one okay so the last value is one and that's what i'm interested in and z should become equal to one and here i'm just going to copy and paste this same thing i'll say the value of z all right now let's try printing it let's see what happens It's running and you get the value of x is three, seven, and one. Okay, that's exactly what you want. And now let's try comparing them with assert equal to. So the value of x you got by destructuring a tuple, value of y you got by destructuring a tuple again, but the value of z you got by destructuring an array. And now what you can do is we want to assert the value in c if we can do that. So assert and score equal. And assert is going to be very, very common. So assert and score equal is going to be very common throughout a Rust journey. We'll be checking values. We'll be comparing them uh, using assert underscore equal. So here, uh, what I want to show you is that when you want to compare all of these values, so you want to say x, y, z, or z, and you want to see if they are equal. Uh, in fact, they're equal to three comma seven comma one because that's what you want, right? You want three, seven, and one. And this is how you'll have to pass it to the assert equal um, function. You'll have to pass an array of x, y, z, and you'll have to pass an array with three, seven, one. Put a semicolon there. And if everything goes well, you want to print out success. And now let's try doing that. Let's try running the program. So we'll say car go run. So everything works perfectly fine and you get success in the end. Okay, so this is how you assert 
the values uh, in just one go. If you want to assert multiple values with other set of multiple values, you can pass them both as arrays inside the assert equal to uh, function and then you get those values. Okay. So um, this is, but, but this can be slightly confusing to some people, right? So this is what I want to teach you in this video, but I just want, I just want to point out the fact that when I'm, when I want value out of an array, I want to write uh, those square brackets. I want to say that, you know, this is an array that I'm just destructurizing. Okay, just make sure you note that, okay, because this can throw a lot of people off. When you're destructuring a tuple, because let's say if you're coming from a JavaScript background, you don't have tuples and arrays, two different things, right? You just have uh, arrays there. Um, so if you're destructuring a tuple, you are, uh, you know, saying that you want to, uh, you have these round brackets. Just make sure you uh, remember to do that when you have to do that. And here it doesn't matter where you got the values from by destructuring a tuple or array. You can always pass those individual values because x, y, z, when they have those values, they're just integers. It doesn't matter if they came from a tuple or an array. They can You can pass that as an array and pass those three values as an array that you want to compare with. That's what you get as success. So I hope this is clear. I hope you're learning a lot and you're enjoying Rust. And I'll see you in the next video. Do subscribe if you haven't subscribed because you'll get awesome content like this. Thank you and see you.